I want my wing nuggets. Hello everybody, Jeff I'm here to give you another video. This is a special video because it is Jeff and Taylor's 8th anniversary. That is right. I have, it's, well, it's been 8 years since I created Jeff and Taylor, the comic series. And so, uh, since this is a special video for this channel, uh, I think it's about time I uh, show my face uh, in a really long time. Since I usually never show my face in this channel. Yes. yes. So how are you guys doing? Uh, yeah, as you can see, I'm wearing my Corrosive Comics shirt. If any of you, if, if any of you guys working in the Corrosive Comics are uh, uh, watching this video, what's up? You know, I, I always like to see you guys every time I go to the Emerald City Comic Con. So, yeah, uh, shout out to Sean and Micah, and uh, who else works there? I think there's another guy named Sean, but shout out to all of you guys. Okay. <laughs> Alright, um, can we adjust the lighting here, please? Adjust everything? Okay. So, how's it going, guys? I think I already said that. Okay. Well, that is right. It's been eight years since I created Jeff and Taylor. Um, the official series right now. I mean, I created the two boys back when I was 11 years old. Uh, that was like a long time ago. Uh, but it wasn't until November 16th of 2004 when I actually figured out a uh, an, an, an official series for them for them to go because they were. I was really experimenting with them, uh, seeing where they belong and stuff. But you know, I just decided to make a, a whole series. That's what, and that was when I wanted to be an animator and wanted Jeff and Taylor to be a TV show instead of a comic, but it was not until a, later, a year later until I really wanted to make them into a comic series. And yeah, that was the same time, you know, when I, fit, when I figured out of an official series, that was the same time where I created uh, the, whole, the, the whole rest of the cast. That's where I created David, Cindy, Maria, the West End Girls, uh, Kim, and yeah. Okay. Well, what 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 am I gonna do in this uh, in this special? I mean, this has to be kind of different from my from my other videos. Well, it's gonna be long, as you can probably tell by the um, by the time meter here. I know a lot of you guys like long videos, so I'm gonna do this long video. And uh, today is November seventeenth. I'm, I'm I'm recording this on November seventeenth, the day after the anniversary. Because yesterday I was hanging out with my girlfriend, you know, you know, it's girlfriend first. I gotta, I gotta say that, and uh, yeah, who knows? This might be uploaded on the 17th or the 18th. It depends on YouTube because lately my videos have been uploading really slowly. I don't know if it's Google Chrome that's doing it or YouTube itself. I mean, a little rant on YouTube. They changed the the layout in my homepage and my other channel. That sucks. So I hate it when they change stuff, because it's harder to, to see my uploads, and it's harder to see my subscriptions, you know, when, when they upload things. So, alright. I know, this is supposed to be my professional channel, but uh, since it's a special video, I'm just going to be um, myself, okay? I think it's just best to do that. Well, in this, in this video, I'm going to uh, read a chapter from this book. It is... My, the universe in my head, by me. There's my face, and here's uh, Jeff and Taylor, right here. Yeah. <laughs> I okay. To break the ice a little bit, um, I am going to tell you a very funny story. I think I've already told you this story, but I want to. I want to tell you again. Uh, when I was telling my uh, the the curricular advisor in my college, about like over a year ago, or. Well, not over a year ago. It was uh, almost a year ago. He was he was asking, well, what was I going to put in the cover of my uh, thesis book? And I told him uh, in a, in a muttered voice because I because I was tired. I said, oh, it's just is it just going to be me with my Jeff and Taylor? You know, me with my Jeff and Taylor. And he says, what? And I'm like, me with my Jeff and Taylor characters. And he and he's like, oh, I thought you said you with your genitalia. And I'm like, what? Oh. Goodness no! I'm not that kind of guy. I'm not that kind of artist. I'm not that. Uh, t oh, 
clear-headed, uh, open-minded, I should say. Jeez, I'm not like that, folks. Heck, no. <laughs> so anyway, let's uh, let's begin. I'm not going to read you the whole thing. I'm just going to read you uh, chapter three. Explication. I pretty much, uh, I pretty much described my whole uh, reasoning and history uh, of Jeff and Taylor. And yeah, it's pretty much uh, explication, or this is another fancy word for um, explanation for um, for my uh, comic series. So I'm just gonna read this out loud. And but don't worry, I'm gonna show you a slideshow of uh, of my artwork, my recent artwork and all that. Well, recent artwork and old artwork and everything. So. Yeah. So yeah, so you, you guys won't be bored or anything. So let's begin. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I actually made a short-lived series on Jeff and Taylor back in fifth grade. These were short episodes on the stupid adventures these boys were in. I remembered some of the episodes, but vaguely. Like this one story where Jeff's house was all frozen because he left the freezer door open or finding a working fan in the middle of the heat wave. These episodes were just rip-offs of Spongebob Squarepants. I was into that show back in the day. And even, uh, I even had Jeff and Taylor work in a fast food restaurant with a greedy boss, just like in Spongebob. But I was trying to be original. Most episodes and events were uninspiring and stupid. Like leaving a garage unclean for a weekend and having to clean two feet of dust everywhere with the hose, leaving a dirty flood flow through town. It is kind of weird how these boys were 12 years old at the time and they lived in their own houses and uh, ha had a job and everything. It was short-lived and I'm glad it was. In sixth grade I made the series called uh, Two Big Idiots, a trilogy where, um, you know, which, which was about uh, 60 to 80 pages each, you know, little books. I made Jeff and Taylor the stereotypical dumb duo, like uh, Beavis and Butthead, Bill and Ted, and uh, Polly Shore and Stephen Baldwin in Biodome, and etc. I saw those shows as a successful way to portray a male duo, so I just copied them. I was only 12 at the time, and I had no sense of thinking outside the box. About the series, they follow the biggest zany misadventures of the two boys. The first story was about them accidentally falling into an alternate dim dimension and having to find four colored diamonds to get back while being chased by a mafia group, an old lady, and an evil clone. The second story had the boys fly a rocket ship to New York City and participate in a scavenger hunt to stop a thousand-year-old mummy wizard. The third and final story of the series had the two of them go on an epic adventure throughout the land of a Legend of Zelda game, Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask to be more specific, with the help of Bart Simpson. These books were fun to write and draw, and it is a tragedy that I threw them away. Through the middle school years, Jeff and Taylor went on new adventures. The first story was basically just a remake of the first two big idiots, but with a love interest for Taylor, and a main villain. It was not too enthusiastic with the book making uh, phase anymore. I didn't even try writing the words, and I hardly colored the pictures. The other book was uh, Jeff and Taylor in Goosebump Mansion. A story where the two boys go to another town, and it was infested with the creatures from the Goosebump series by R.L. Stein. Again, I made Jeff and Taylor two teenage boys who live in their own houses without parents. I guess it was something fun that I always wanted to have, a house with no parents. It was also funny how ignorant I was when it came to owning houses. For instance, Jeff and Taylor bought a big blue three-story house that cost them $12,000. When I entered high school, I officially had an idea for a J&T series. I was so eager, I wrote down all the episodes in a couple days. This was when I wanted to be an animator, but I never really knew anything about television or, or the animation business. I even planned on J&T to have 25 episodes per season, even though one season usually contains 12 or 13 episodes. At this time, I was watching Aqua Teen Hunger Force, and it greatly influenced the way I, I told earlier stories. Originally, J&T was going to be a cartoon show for, for adults. 
I imagine lots of comic uh, bloodshed, swearing, sexual themes, just like how it, just like how it was in, uh, in, in Adult Swim and Cartoon Network. About a quarter of the characters uh, were very obscure and strange beings, again, just like in uh, Aqua Teen. Like a two-dimensional floating face, a stick figure with a wolf's head, a zombie girl that gives personal advice, and cannibalistic children. I had fun thinking up uh, some stuff for the series, but when I got down to some real thinking and actually researched on what an animator really goes through, I decided that JNT becoming an animated series was not the best thing to look forward to. The summer after freshman year, the case closed graphic novels my sister ordered for me uh, greatly influenced my career choice. Gosho Oyama has uh, proved that one man could launch a popular franchise throughout the world, and that gave me an idea to make JNT a graphic novel series. There is one benefit in creating graphic novels, and it's that I have complete control on what I put it in. On what I put in, <laughs> at least without an editor. The story's uh, the way that is uh, fitting to the characters and their development. My art style has changed too. Goshu's comic pages were fun and action packed. Even even if it was a couple pages of dialogue, it was still fun to read. In sophomore year, I whipped up a new episode list and started making the first JNT comic. It took a total of five months with homework and all, but I was glad I finished it. The best thing about it, it was um, I was showing my friends and family my process. They could easily tell that I was enjoying this, and they encouraged me. I also found that it was a great way to get myself noticed in school. In school. I was very shy and unpopular at first through 12th grade. All the other students were either really smart or really athletic, making them get all the attention. So I slowly started to get realized throughout the school when I turned Jeff and Taylor uh, comic strips for the school newspaper. My teachers and friends loved them. I remember the best joke I've done was when Jeff and Taylor uh, gym teacher yells, drop and give me 50, and the boys drop to the floor and Jeff asks, I don't have any cash, do you, ex do you accept checks? As an upperclassman, I continued Jeff and Taylor, making 50 pages per episode, usually done in a few months, like always. My drawings progressed, and I, and I was getting better at page layout. I kind of looked down on my previous comics, they, thinking that they were inferior, inferior to my current ones. I actually saw my technical flaws while I was taking a summer cartooning class in the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Local cartoonist Jamie Smith was teaching the class. <laughs> And he pointed out that I had uh, fluidity problems. Word balloons were overlapping certain panels that led the reader's eye towards the wrong places. I had tangents, which were lines in two separate planes touching each other. I also did not center the text in, word, in, in the word balloons. Thanks to that uh, summer course, I found out that a foundation of my technical uh, philosophies when making a comic. I met Scott McCloud in the class during his 50-state tour. I showed him my first two comics, and he gave me the same exact advice. I knew never to question a professional, and I was glad that he gave a critique of my work. Senior year came around, and my J&T episodes were coming uh, along great. I took a special art class that pretty much let me do whatever I wanted, uh, so I took that time to make J&T episodes. I showed my teacher, Miss Donay, my pages, and got feedback from her. Even my classmates uh, gave me some few suggestions. Senior year was the year people finally knew uh, what I wanted to do and hope to do in the future. A common question my classmates ask uh, uh, to me is, uh, who's Taylor? They kind of knew that Jeff was based on me, but they wanted to know the secret identity of his best friend. <laughs> the, I answer, he's just a guy I made up. I had no friend like Taylor before, and I probably made him up because he's the type of friend uh, I would like to have. Seeing that he's more popular to the fans than Jeff, I think he's the type of best friend e uh, everyone would like. After graduation, I was looking forward to publish JNT as a graphic novel series after I graduate from my college, Northwest College of Art and Design. During my time uh, studying at the school, I matured a bit on my own. Uh, political opinions and why I'm doing things uh, the way I do. After making a YouTube account for myself, I started to watch people my age and a little younger ranting on the current teen shows. They all stated 
opinions that I agreed with about teen shows of today. Since Chef and Taylor is a teen comic, uh, hopefully becoming animated series, I felt obligated to listen to these rants to know what my audience wanted in a television show or comic. For that time, I kept saying Jeff and Taylor, uh, their mission was to bring back the good quality of shows back in the 1980s and 1990s. What these people would rant about were how teen shows and sitcoms were all about being popular and becoming a star. The people also pointed out that the newer teen shows uh, almost never tell a, a moral of the story. Even if there are morals, they never are realistic. The main focus on the whole Jeff and Taylor series is character development. To me, well-developed characters make a show, movie, or comic really enjoyable. These, uh, well, there are things I have to ask myself when writing a story. Who are these characters? Uh, how are they relatable? What are their relationships with one another? And can they keep an audience interested? There are 40 main characters in JNT, but only five of them appear in almost every episode. Jeff, Taylor, Cindy, Maria, and David. Cindy and Maria are Jeff's sisters. Maria is 7 years old and Cindy is 18. Throughout the whole series, their parents go abroad, traveling the world to relieve a midlife crisis. <coughs> Cindy is now both a big sister and guardian to Jeff and Maria. I believe it is a good choice to get the parents out of the series because I am hinting that not all teenagers live in a house with a mother, a father, and siblings. Even Taylor lives in a house with two twin brothers, a little sister, and one mother. Uh, it is unknown where Taylor's father is. Uh, I might uh, hint about it throughout the whole series. Although, I would like to point out that, Jeff, uh, that Taylor's parents are still technically married. Uh... David's relationship with Jeff and Taylor is a neighbor and part-time friend. By part-time, uh, David sometimes likes them and sometimes he hates them, but mostly hates them. David is a 19-year-old tough guy who works at a body shop. He really hates to be seen around kids because it would ruin his chances to go on dates with the ladies. Since Jeff and Taylor are kids to him, he hates to do them favors or to be dragged in their, in, in, into their troublesome predicaments. David also serves as <laughs> the comic slapstick relief. I do have my own philosophies when, when I write my Jeff and Taylor comic. I like to subtly put my beliefs in what is right and wrong in my episodes. Both characters face challenges and villains representing a certain bad trait that I despise. For example, in one episode, Jeff and Taylor help babysit three kids who love to physically torture people. The reason why these kids are like that is because they have parents who do not believe in, punish in punishing their kids. I do not like it when parents put their child up in a pedestal and believe the world should revolve around them. This causes the child to be spoiled, and in Jeff and Taylor's case, deadly. Of course, no serious injuries happen in the episode, but I still want the reader to understand that the kids are wrong on what they do and what the parents believe in. These lessons are barely taught in teen shows of today. I consider teen sitcoms of today to be the opposite in entertainment value of JNT. A couple years ago, I stated it was uh, JNT's mission to bring back good quality storytelling to the public eye. I have noticed that the sitcoms that target preteens and teenagers have unrelatable characters. Most of the main characters are famous musicians, all stars of a sport, a popular cheerleader, or a struggling teen with a superpower. What I try to tell in JNT are two unpopular teenage boys that nobody knows about during these amazing things and still remain unpopular. These, uh, what these boys gain in their endeavors are respect for indiv individuals, learning life lessons, and becoming better people. I do not want them to gain materialistic rewards by doing good things. Even if they are given a trophy, I still write that they uh, lose the trophy or it breaks. I think the best characters are the lovable losers. A lovable loser is a character who always gets the short end of the stick when trying to do good, still remains a loser, but he or she still gets up and remains confident. That is the kind of character people like to see. The main character does not always have to win or get the trophy or receive popularity with the other characters. The readers of a comic or viewers of a, or of a movie or television show want believable characters who they can relate to. Karma plays a big role in the comic. Whenever a character does bad things, 
No matter who it is, karma would get to them. If a kid bullies another kid, the teachers uh, do not anything, don't do anything about it. Then the bully. Uh, if a kid bullies another kid and the teachers don't do anything about it, well, the bully will get run over by a shopping cart full of rotten meat. Bully, the bully is not seriously hurt, or he or she, but he or she will learn a lesson. In one episode of J&T, Jeff and Taylor get into a car race, but lay out traps across the track. When the race starts, their opponent takes a shortcut, completely missing the first trap. Then the, then the two boys fall for their own traps. They learn their lesson not to cheat, or at least cheat with caution. My inspirations help me get ideas for my JNT series, and in a way, I am similar to some of them. R.L. Stein, for example, likes to leave each of his uh, serials to have the same, num uh, same page numbers. I also like to have um, uh, my episodes be the same exact length of uh, 50 pages. Stein also comes up with the title of the story first, where most authors do that last. I thought up of uh, over 100 titles of JNT. Uh, before really thinking about the plot in detail, J uh, Tim Jacobus, the cover art, uh, the cover artist for R.L. Stein's Goosebump books, uh, with him I decided to have that mesmerizing look in my uh, cover art. I want preteens and adults to notice these covers quickly and have them laugh, amazed, or creeped out by my cover art. Aquatine Hunger Force helped me think uh, outside the box and not be s so conservative with, with my storytelling. With uh, Aquatine's surreal moments and villains, I decided that JNT could use some surreal moments and villains of their own. Keenan and Kel have uh, been a great influence on the personalities of my characters. I always liked the teenage duel of a smart and daring one and a stupid and clumsy one. With Jeff and Taylor, though, I decided to not stick with that formula entirely. Both of them uh, pretty much have the same amount of intelligence, but Taylor is, has more of a naive approach of life while Jeff is more of a realist. Since I started to make comics, I have been looking forward, excuse me, I've been looking at the way Gosho uh, structured his pages, and, and he has a really good use of point of view in his graphic novels. There were nice lookups, uh, <laughs> there were nice lockups with the panels to help the reader's uh, uh, eyes flow. Characters overlapping one, one or two sides of a panel and skewed panels for the more action-packed parts. Drawing the characters in different angles to help tell a story is what separates the graphic novels and the comic strips. To me, making a comic book is just like making a movie. If, I were, if it were a movie, I'm the producer, director, writer, makeup person, the camera operator, casting director, etc. It is all easy for me to make a comic, but I generally say to people who want to be in this profession that it is hard to do, especially if they're on their own. Just like a movie or television show, visuals in a comic are very important. The formal name for comics is sequential art. In order for sequential art to exist, there must be pictures that tell a story clearly and smoothly. In fact, a comic does not even need words in order to tell what's going on. When a comic book artist uses point of view and interesting panel layouts, the readability becomes easy, quick, and enjoyable. Anybody can be a successful comic artist as long as they have the dedication to do so. With that, it becomes easy. Oyoyama has uh, really helped me view comics as a really strong form of art that can tell a lengthy story, while being constructed by only one person. When JNT first started, I intended it to be for older teens and adults. My, my earlier drafts and ideals had characters' heads <laughs> getting decapitated, semi-nude people, language, sexual jokes, and drug references. A couple years later, I made JNT more tamed but it is still added uh, mild adult humor and mild language. If it fits the story and characters, then it's okay. Ever since arriving at college, I got the chance to listen to people's own opinions on what is appropriate to put in my comic. They assume because of my style, the comic is aimed towards children. I never imagined kids under the age of 10 reading J&T. Jeff and Taylor is a comic that will hopefully become a multimedia franchise. I gained knowledge on what readers want and what I want. It took uh, six years, now eight, to fully grasp a meaning in Jeff and Taylor. That meaning is to live an enjoyable life, do things for people, do good things for people, stand up to the morally corrupt, and have the courage to save loved ones. 
that is only the uh, that is only scratching the surface of J and T. So yeah, there you have it. There goes uh, my chapter um, in this book, explaining about the history of JT and my philosophies and everything. So, with that said, I really hope you understand more about my series and understand me more. If you're if uh, if you're a fan uh, of JT, then um, hopefully you understand this more and. If you're a completely new to Jeff and Taylor, if this is like your first video of uh, anything Jeff and Taylor related or me, then um, then I really hope I, uh, I caught your uh, interest, and um, hopefully you'll uh, you'll follow J and I actually left uh, links in the in the description linking to the Jeff and Taylor um, uh, web comic page, the, the the Facebook page, my Deviant Art. And my blog, just to let you know, my blog and the Jeff and Taylor website hasn't been updated in months. It's because, uh, I don't know, I, I've been really busy with, uh, with work and everything. But, just to let you know, yeah, the, the comic itself is still on hi hiatus, but it will return on January 1st, once I uh, get everything done, from now to the end of the year. And yeah, I will try to redesign the website too, so it won't be all overflown with blue all the time, you know? Eight years. Who, who knew I'll, I'll be here? I mean, I, for eight years ago, I never knew that I was going to make a YouTube video and reading you this. But, yeah. You know, sometimes I would feel discouraged on uh, if Jeff and Tanner will be become popular. Like, when I see YouTube videos, people see the, the videos with the whole bunch of views and all that are, are usually the stupid videos, uh, the very dumb videos, or music videos, or Justin Bieber, One Direction, whatever. But, uh, but yeah, sometimes I would feel discouraged, and sometimes I would, I would feel really encouraged, you know, to keep doing what, what I love to do. Even though um, last year in this channel I predicted well, one of my one of my goals is to make uh, is to have a thousand subscribers by the end of um, 2012. Now I'm like at a uh, 340 something subscribers. Hopefully that that will grow in in the number of years. Because I know this is kind of dorkish for me to say, but every 10 years, starting if it ends with a four, it's usually a really great year for me. Like uh, 2004 was a great year. And hopefully 2014 will be a great year for me too. I'm hoping 2014 will be the year that Jeff and Taylor would get uh, big na in national attention. Like, um, like I would uh, sell my, my my comics and everything um, to more people. And yeah, and hopefully in a couple of years, I'll get a call from a publishing company or something. To actually officially publish everything. Even though I self-publish right now, it will be nice to have an official publisher. And hopefully, if it becomes popular enough, I'll have an animation deal. So Jeff and Taylor will be an animated series. That would be so awesome. So awesome. But i got to pray hard for that to do to happen. And of course, I have to work. You know, it's all, it's all one big circle. You know? It's, it's all the work. And I can't be successful without God me doing the work and you guys uh, actually reading the work and I guess the publishers too <laughs> yeah and the editors and all that the business people the suits anyway uh, so yeah I really thank you for listening to this uh, and, and watching the video uh, the video is not over yet because I want to reward you with, with something fun now that uh, you know you uh, listen to my story and uh, listen to me throughout this whole time, I'm going to show you something fun. Uh, you've you've heard of the game uh, Bond Nation Racers for the PS3. Uh, and I, you actually can create your own characters here, and <laughs> me being the dork that I am, I created some Jeff and Taylor characters and their own carts. So I'm going to uh, point this camera at the at my um, television, and you get to see those, those characters. 
So, without further ado, let's go. Let's do this. Okay, guys, here we go. Uh, sorry for the quality. You know, I'm just recording this from a camcorder. But here's Taylor. This is his. This is him. And he's in his car called the Tanner Tantrum. It is awesome. Yeah, he's just uh, looking at his ride. And uh, let's see if we can uh, change to another character. Let's, I'm going to show you Jeff. Here's Jeff. Let's uh, change his car to his his uh, respective car. Here we go. It's a little off-road vehicle. It's supposed to be a, like a Hummer. I call it the Hummer H4. Now let's show Blue. This is her car, Blue Bubble. And this is her. It's kind of weird, even though the their hair and their, and their clothing are limited, they still look like that. <laughs> Same characters. And here's Jane, you know. Jane is so cute, look at that. Alright, let's change her car to uh, what I call the Janester. Look at that, it's like this, this little uh, pimped out station wagon. And uh, finally, let's uh, see David. <laughs> he looks so mean. But hey, it's David for you. And he, of course, David has this car. You know, the green Nissan Skyline that he loves so much. That he calls Hot Rod. Yep. The lightning bolts and everything. So, so yeah. Let's actually uh, race. Uh, I want to show you a race. Let's see if I can win. Uh, I'm going to go with Jeff, you know. Because he is uh, one of the main guys. He's my main man. I know that I said that he's based on me, but not really. You know, it's we just have the same name. That's it. And what's interesting about his car is that you see the bat well, a very large battery in the back. It is battery powered. You know, a battery powered Hummer. That'll be the day. And look, David, Taylor, and Jeff all there. You see how unhappy David is? I told you, he's a part-time friend. He doesn't like him. Yeah, it's so unhappy. And look, Taylor's uh, Taylor's a champion. All that, oh man. Oh, okay, let's do a quick race. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter where. Uh, let's go. Let's uh, go here. The pirate ship. It's just a quick race, you know, showing you how Jeff looks in the race. Here we are at the starting line as the racers take their positions. Anyone ever notice how scary looking these guys are? Hey, Jeff is not scary looking, you jerk. Jeez, hate you. See, that guy's such an asshole. So sorry. It's been a really long time since I played this, but I forgot how fun it was, you know? Yes. Okay, maybe I am. Uh-huh. Just a little. Sorry I'm not talking that much, you know, just Oh boy, what was that? Okay. Let's boost up. And by the way, someone just passed you. I know that. I'll get rid of him. Yeah, how do you like them apples? Perfect lap. You're really coming into your own now. Yeah, this Jeff knows how to drive. It's a shame there's no uh, baseball cap. Because, um, I had to deal with this hat, you know. But he still looks like Jeff, you know? Uh, oh crap. That's not good. Ah, jeez, what was that? You're leading the race? Simply shocking. <laughs> Flabbergasted. Right, 
better believe it. Good thing I have enough power for my shield, you know? Jeez. Oh, just like in Mario Kart, you have uh, weapons. Last lap. Save nothing, kid. Leave it all on the track. Crap. They got me with a sonic boom. But yeah, this is a little product placement if, for you guys. Uh, if you guys have a PS3 and looking for a fun uh, racing game where you can create your own characters, then I recommend Mod Nation Racers. Get ready to sign some autographs. Oh yeah. Well, hopefully that will happen in a few years, you know, me signing some autographs for some fans. Hey, who are you? Knuckle down, pedal to the metal. Well, that's crap. That's crap, man. I have second place. I'd like to make some witty Biff Treadwell trademark comment about the race right now, but quite frankly, I dozed off around lap two. Gary, care to take this one? Oh, yeah, yeah. you see, I told you he's a jerk. He's a jerk. I'm sorry, it's the camera. I literally have my tripod on top of me. I'm sorry. You know, just to get a better view of everything, so, ugh. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this, um... This uh, special in my Jeff and Taylor comic series uh, channel. Uh, yeah, eight years of Jeff and Taylor. Let's uh, let's hope it keeps going, and uh, pray for success. All right, guys. Uh, this is Jeff. This is uh, this is JFM signing up. Goodbye. Yeah. Pop filter. Oh, okay.